There's much to talk about. Let's get to our panel right now. Joining us from Berlin is Timo Lohocki. He focuses on European politics with the German Marshall Fund of the United States. Jackson James is the recipient of Germany's highest civilian award. He's currently president of the American Institute for Contemporary German Studies at Johns Hopkins University. And Ansgar Grau is the senior political correspondent for the German newspapers Die Welt and Welt am Sonntag. Thanks to all of you for joining us. Ansgar, let me start with you. Angela Merkel has won a fourth term, but it was the worst election result for her party since 1949. How weakened is she as a result? She's very much weakened, uh, and that's not only because of this poor result. Uh, the other part uh, of this uh, yesterday's result is that the uh, uh, former, or up to now, coalition partner, the Social Democrats, uh, immediately declared that they would go into the opposition, that they are not ready for any talks about a new uh, coalition, and therefore now Angela Merkel has to try to, to form a so-called Jamaica coalition with the liberals, uh, the, the pro-enterprise uh, uh, um, uh, party in Germany, and the Greens, uh, left uh, uh, ecological-oriented uh, Greens. And that will be uh, a hard job to do, but the only alternative to this Jamaica coalition would be new elections, since the Social Democrats decided to go into the opposition. They could change their, their mind. Uh, we saw the same thing uh, only fee four years ago when they also declared in the beginning we won't go into a coalition with the CDU, but this time it sounds a little bit more serious by them. Jackson, the big news out of this election, of course, was the uh, anti-immigration alternative for Germany party, which got more than 13% of the vote, or just under 13%, actually. Now, for the first time since the Nazis, we have a far-right party which will have seats in the German parliament. Uh, some have described it as the ghost of Germany's past that is returning. Is that a fair comment, do you think? I don't think it's that so much, but I do think that there is a groundswell that has already been felt at the state and local levels of people who are, you know, responding to fear-mongering, but also frustrated by the party system and feeling not being heard. You know, we, we've had this uh, in the States for some time, and the result was we elected a president that we didn't expect to elect. So this is not something that is even unique to Germany. Um, so I don't think it's a ghost of the past, but it's a portent of the future and how the political parties are going to have to deal with it. Right. It's certainly something that isn't unique to Germany. We've seen this uh, in other countries around the world as well. Timo, this is what Angela Merkel had to say about the AFD. Let's listen. Of course, we are facing a huge test with the AFD entering parliament. We will carry out profound analysis because we want to win back the voters of AFD by solving problems and listening to their worries and sometimes their fears, but above all, through good policies. So, Timo, how does she win back those who voted for the AFD? Well, it's difficult to say how many voters exactly stem from the conservatives. However, the first polls seem to indicate that one-fourth of AfD supporters came from the Conservatives and they are by and large um, disappointed by two developments with the Conservatives. For one, that they didn't dare any um, daring economic reforms, which used to be a stronghold of the Conservatives. And secondly, that they didn't quite communicate the immigration issue to an extent that it would be capable of convincing Conservative voters that it would more or less grab conservative voters up their sleeve and accept their concerns and their fears. Quite the contrary, Angela Merkel's chancery actually had a lot of public statements which denounced the fears of conservative voters as illegitimate. And this, of course, was the best the far-right alternative could hope for. Ansgar, of course, the AFD talked uh, after the election. Let's listen to what one of their leaders had to say. We will bring back the issue of migration to the parliament, where it never really was. And one thing I need to say here clearly, there will be an issue that will decide our future. And this issue, we articulate factually but clearly. We need to find an answer to the question about how to deal with Islam. And it is clear from our side that we stand for freedom of religion and opinions, 
but we say no to Islamization. We want to keep our culture. So, Ansgar, that message that we're hearing there, uh, that German culture is being threatened by Islam, is it something that resonates with Germans? Yes, as we have seen yesterday, otherwise they wouldn't have uh, had this stunning uh, election result by nearly 13 percent. And I think when we discuss uh, what uh, has to be done now, uh, the first thing I think we have to realize, and, and the party of Angela Merkel has to admit, she made terrible mistakes during especially uh, the year 2015 when for, uh, for weeks and, uh, or even months uh, the, the borders to Germany were uncontrolled. Everybody could pour in uh, in, in uh, huge droves. Uh, immigrants came without any registration, with, uh, without control. And um, everybody can understand that a lot of people in Germany, not only those um, I think about eight or six million who voted now for AFD are concerned that the stability, the, uh, the security in, in a country um, is weakened if we don't control our borders. And therefore, I think the, the first part of uh, Angela Merkel and the CDU to regain those voters who went to the AFD would be to admit, yes, we made, we made mistakes, we made faults, and we have to correct our uh, politics. Jackson, what is your view on that? Yes, Angela Merkel did throw open Germany's borders to more than a million refugees. How badly did that hurt her? Well, evidently, as Ansgar just said, it did hurt her in the polls. And my sense is that, in many ways, you shouldn't forget the fact that there were a lot of Germans that responded to that challenge in a positive way. And so you've got a pocket of people who resent it, and you had a lot of people who tried to support it. But this is a generational issue. It's not just going to be solved by one policy uh, adjustment here or there. And I think that's one of the challenges that's ahead, not only for Merkel, but her successor. Uh, as a result, I think that you can say that, uh, you know, she made a mistake by overestimating how the society would be able to deal with this really large event. But at the same time, I think that it's a question mark about the overall question of German society. How much diversity can it tolerate and how much unity does it demand? Tima, how did this election break down in terms of geography, east and west, and in terms of demographics, young and old? Well, we tend to see at first glance that the far right is much stronger in the east. That is true. They kind of even are strongest, the strongest party in certain areas of Saxony, which is close to the Czech and the Polish border. However, it is far from certain to refer to the AfD as a regional phenomenon because the AfD did extremely well in very affluent, very stable liberal areas in the southwest of Germany, in Baden-Württemberg, which used to be a stronghold of German liberalism. Even there, the AfD was polling at 13%. And when we talk about sociodemographics, we see that the AfD could be referred to as the third people's party. They more or less are equally spread, almost equally spread, amongst all um, education strata and all um, professions. However, what we see is that there is more men but women voting for them and people between 30 and 44 tend to be a bit more inclined to vote for the far right. However, it needs to be emphasized the AfD is reaching out beyond a clear cut social strata. It ought to be referred to as the third people's party in Germany, albeit the smallest. Ansgar, uh, you know, you've worked here in the United States and shortly after the election of Donald Trump we were hearing very often that Mrs. Merkel, Mrs. Angela Merkel is now taking over the mantle of leader of the free world. When we look at this election result, what kind of impact is that going to have on her internationally? The big problem is uh, she, she is seen as, uh, as something like the leader of the free world and uh, other told, uh, named her uh, the, uh, the last liberal leader in, in Europe. Uh, but now we have a situation where it could happen that uh, she, vo she, vo she will fail to form a new government since uh, the differences between the liberals and the CSU, the, the Bavarian sister party of the CDU, are so big that we don't know whether it will 
be, she will be able and the coalition partners will be able to form a coalition, let's say, uh, till the beginning of the next year or uh, even later uh, won't fail to, to uh, form the coalition. And for this time, um, Germany won't be able to take um, part uh, in international politics to, to overtake uh, responsibilities in the international world. And that's, I think, it's a problem in a time when we have, for example, the United Kingdom is struggling with the Brexit, yep. uh, uh, France is uh, struggling with some economic reforms and the uh, uh, opposing uh, trade unions against those uh, reforms. Uh, and um, in, in this situation, it will, it's, uh, it's totally complicated to have this uh, complicated uh, coalition uh, negotiations. I, I, I beg to differ a bit. I do not think Germany or Europe is embarking upon a phase of instability for two reasons. For one, as long as the negotiations are underway, the current administration will be in place which means the entirely highly skilled administration that was a safeguard of stability will remain in place up until a new government is formed. And secondly, despite the fact that the next government might have a slimmer majority in parliament, if it consists of the liberals or the greens with the conservatives, they do not differ that much on foreign policy matters. There are a few nuances when it comes to Eurozone policies but the next German government, if it, as we presume, be based on the Liberals and the Greens and the Conservatives, will be as staunchly pro-European, as staunchly Atlanticist as the previous one. So I strongly make the case against expecting a phase of instability in the middle of Europe. Ansgar, go ahead. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't speak uh, of instability, but there would be at least a perception of. Um, Germany that is not able to find a new government uh, that is unrulable and that could be a problem. It's more mm. perception and image uh, problem than a real uh, politic problem. Okay, we need to take a break right now. More of our conversation when we return. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.